Thank you all so, so much for coming. I know it's early. Um, I have yet to have my coffee, so this will be a fun 25 minutes. Uh, my name is Amber Vittoria, and I am an artist and poet, and I live and work in New York City. Thank you so much for coming to the digital renaissance and the evolution of the fine art world with NFTs. Before I have these lovely artists introduce themselves, I'm just going to do a quick intro of me. I am a painter and I am a poet. And my work is abstracted and colorful and aims to champion and celebrate the nuances of womanhood. And NFTs have really opened up the world for me as a fine artist. Before learning about Web3 and NFTs, majority of my income and my work as a freelancer was commercial work. So to be able to now kind of pivot and position myself as a fine artist in this space has been incredibly humbling and exciting. I'm super excited to chat with these incredible people to my left about how art has impacted them within this space and to see what their thoughts are on the future of NFTs and fine art. So without further ado. Hi, everyone. Hello. Oh, it is on. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Serena Chargunla. Uh, my, my favorite thing about this space is focusing on art, blockchain, and business. Um, so I'm an entrepreneur in the space. My background is as a lifelong art collector, um, as well as in marketing and business development. Uh, and I'm currently the co-founder of Tree Trunk, which is a consensus mesh business launching in two days. Um, it is an NFT marketplace that um, focuses on providing artists, creators, thought leaders um, with a, a stream of income um, and a royalty distribution network. So we are very focused on making the space a better place for creators. Um, as well as you can embed that code onto any marketplace or any website that takes an embed code. Um, but more about me. Um, so I've been, I've had the pleasure of meeting several artists um, and truly my favorite part about being in the space is meeting different creators, um, especially the ones on this panel. So go ahead. Hello, it's such a pleasure to meet all of you. Uh, you are divinely unique. You weren't born to fit in. You were born to stand out. In fact, the odds of being you are one in 400 quadrillion. And that's a miracle. I'm Ragsy X. You're beyond quirky artist for all things tech and Web3. I'm not from your planet, and I'm a New York weirdo. My name's Jimmy Danko. Uh, I'm a fine artist. Uh, been doing that for the better part of the last 10 years. Uh, jumped into the crypto space back in spring of last year and was the lead artist for a, a generative project called Ethereals. Um, and that, that was kind of my foray into the crypto space. And it's, just, it's been amazing to connect with other artists and creators like the, the people I'm sharing the stage with. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Andrea, uh, I'm an artist as well. Uh, if you were actually just before this panel around in Times Square, I had one of my pieces on the big kahuna billboard of this hotel, actually that colorful one, I don't know if anyone uh, actually went and see it. Um, so I'm mostly focusing on the programmable art and really trying to go next level with the aspiration release using the NFT as a medium uh, to deliver uh, something and try to also you know, innovate with uh, on-chain generative art. Uh, and then my story in the blockchain space goes from like around 2017-18. Uh, I was very involved, uh, I still am as an investor uh, with a fund called uh, Eterna Capital in London. And more recently, I also started a, a company called Aeris, which is basically a cultural institution that is aiming to work with very high profile artists from the traditional world and the NFT world uh, and really again focus on uh, really aspirational uh, releases, something that you look back and uh, you actually say, okay, great. I mean, I didn't know you could do that with uh, NFTs because I feel that uh, the space should really evolve from phase one that was really experimenting with the concept of digital ownership uh, of uh, digital goods towards, you know, something really more uh, comprehensive, well-executed, uh, and ambitious. So I, before coming onto this panel, 
asked all of the artists within my community what are the number one questions that they had for artists that were pioneering in this space. There are so many new artists that have started joining this space in the last few weeks, in the last few months, even in the last few days, and even more will join after this amazing conference. So the first and number one question I had was, since you've joined the world of Web3, how has your practice changed and how have you seen other artists change within this space? I can start. <laughs> it's a very easy answer. There was no practice for me before Web3. So it was really me in uh, my private life uh, doing things and uh, experimenting with uh, writing, music, and visual art, and uh, thinking that whatever I was doing was extremely anachronistic and no one would ever uh, care about anything that I do. Um, and then, uh, because I was... Uh, in the blockchain space since quite a few years when I saw the NFT trend mostly uh, around fine art, I was like, okay, wow, crazy. Like, there is no way now I don't get involved as well uh, as a creator and I don't like open up to what I'm doing. So I really started opening up my social media accounts, sharing what I was doing. And it was very early in the days. Um, and I got uh, the gallery that at the point was working very closely with uh, Nifty Gateway to follow me. And uh, really, in a very organic way, shortly after, I did like my first releases with Nifty Gateway that went well. And from there, you know, I started that uh, trajectory. And in a similar way, I met with my business partner to also start uh, Aorist. So for me, it was really an opportunity to be more coherent with myself, express myself, and connect with people, uh, you know, from who, who I am as an individual. And it was very beneficial. Then, of course, you know, there are... Uh, pros and cons in everything. I also understood that I pretty much idealized a lot the art world and the NFT space, you know, like uh, good and bad people are normally distributed among uh, different industries. But uh, in the end, I feel that uh, we have a good shot now at creating something that is uh, very historical. Uh, and if we do it in the right way, NFTs could really become uh, something very inclusive for new creators uh, to come up with uh, very innovative forms of uh, art, uh, express themselves, and, uh, you know, my two cents in the space is uh, really trying to have uh, even a very small contribution uh, towards that direction. And the thing that I find most interesting about that is so many artists, I feel like, are, were at least artists that I know, were so hesitant to join the space if they weren't already a professional artist making commercial work or with big Instagram followings. And the fact that Web3 opens up artists that may not have a following at all to be able to mint and sell their work and then create a community around that work, I think that hands down is the best thing about this space. It's like you don't need a million Instagram followers to then sell your artwork. If anything, I think the opposite is happening. People love the joy of discovery and finding an artist that they can really relate to and then they don't have to worry too much about having to build up that following and that notoriety as an artist to be able to support themselves. So I love that, to be able to take something you're so passionate about and then put it out there in the world and build from there. Anybody else? Yeah, I think, I think you touched on community as well. Um, and I... I attended my first Bitcoin conference in 2011. Um, so it's been really cool to see how the space has changed. But coming in, it was initially very, very techy um, and didn't have very many creatives in it. And just kind of watching the space change from that tech perspective to, I mentioned earlier, I, I love art, blockchain, and business. So this has been the best spot to be in and to watch it grow from 2011, um, but seeing the artists come in and expanding on their community. And artists in Web3 are truly amazing. I just want to put that out there. They are doing their own marketing. They are doing their own business strategy. They are creating on top of all of the other things that they have to do. I have never seen such hardworking artists in my life, and I, I'm just so amazed and inspired. But seeing that in Web3 has just been the biggest change for me, um, and I think that's what inspires me as well. So, yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. That was a great lead into my next question, um, which is since you've joined the world, uh, 
I already asked that one. How are Web3 and NFTs circumventing the traditional processes of the fine art world? And I think you started to touch on that and the fact that artists really now have ownership of how we create and share the work that we're creating, that we no longer have to rely on the traditional um, barriers of needing an agent if you're an illustrator or needing a gallery if you're a painter. So I'd love to hear how you all think things are starting to change within this space. Sure. Um, everyone in here is an artist, whether you're a scientist, a software engineer, or maybe you draw or paint what we think of art. And for the first time in history, you can be anywhere in the world, at any place, and create your art in its true form, digitally, and put it out into the metaverse and anyone in the world can view it. And it's different because when an artist posts something on Instagram or something like that, it's usually not in its organic form. But now everyone can view uh, your artwork, whether it's a code or whether it's a colorful digital work from anywhere in the world at any time. Um, it's such an amazing new space. Uh, we are in the digital renaissance. I just see the blooming of new ideas and uh, people pushing limits, and people we didn't even think of as artists, like the software engineers, the coders, are becoming the new artists in a way with this new tech. And I just find it so inspiring and so interesting. I know that even if you don't paint or draw or do digital works, everyone in here has a talent, and you're able to use that talent to showcase it through blockchain. The, the thing I think of most is the traditional art world navigates primarily in, in analog work, physical work, and this opens up the space to digital work. And there's so many artists, like we have, you think of like Marvel movies and all the digital artists that are working on that kind of stuff. Now there's a whole swath of, of collectors that just focus on the digital work. So having that expansion of a collector base is the, is the thing I think of. And all of my friends that are digital artists are finally like, I can sell originals of my work. And I think that's, I think, what sparked a lot of, for me, I'm a painter, but a lot of artists who do physical work as well being like, oh, this is really interesting that people are interested and invested in the work that we make for ourselves and the stories that we want to tell. Um, and I think the biggest, biggest thing for me was that now as artists and creators, whether you're doing a PFP project or you're selling one of ones or additions, you can actively participate in your secondary sales. And that up until, at least in the United States, I know there are, I don't believe there are any laws that allow that to happen. I know in other countries there are. But now, in perpetuity, we can earn off of the work that we've made previously. And I think that's really encouraging and inspiring to artists to be able to finally support ourselves in a way that also feels fulfilling. So I feel like that's been the biggest change for me as well. I feel super inspired, especially coming to different conferences and seeing artists feel like their most authentic selves and to be able to thrive and not survive. So that's been the best. Um, another question which I got a lot of is what has the been the biggest change for you individually since coming into this space? I know you've been in this space for a minute, so I'd love to hear your thoughts. For sure. Um, so I think for me, um, that's a hard question because since I do like technology as well, it's kind of always kept my interest along the way. But um, I think right now we're in the time that's become my favorite part of it because it's encompassing the art and the technology in one place. Um, and art and NFTs are not the same thing. Um, just want to make that clear. But I think being in a space that's changing and now gearing more towards, um, with your question that you, were, you just asked earlier, I think in the space, yes, we've empowered creators to sell directly to their community. Um, but what happened when that is the only point of contact or the way that you can get in touch with your collectors? That is kind of a harder, a harder step to make from the artist to the collector. And so now all these marketplaces have come in to try to become that middle ground to then put that work out there and help artists reach their community. And of course, there are several artists that are really great at marketing. But there are also fantastic artists that are not great at marketing. Um, and I think that kind of spawned the 
the growth of marketplaces. But I think one thing that marketplaces do wrong is that they aren't looking at being the best creator tool for creators. And so creating something that is the tool for creators to make it easier for them to market or to make it easier for them to distribute their work, for them to have ownership of their work. And I think that is, that's my favorite thing about the space, and that's been the biggest change that I think we're entering into that space now. And in the in IRL, um, you have artists, you have galleries. That that like funnel was created because artists were trying to reach their collectors. And now in the digital space in Web three, artists are still trying to reach their collectors. That hasn't stopped. So there needs to also be an option there. And that's kind of what marketplaces have started to do. Um, and without sounding too shilly, that's what Tree Trunk is trying to do as well, because we are creating creator tools for artists for the longevity of the space. So we're allowing them to create royalty distribution networks on each of their artworks. So artists don't have to create 20,000 works to have one stream of income. They can create one work and have a stream of income and then create another work and have a second stream of income. So I think my favorite part about the space has yet to be seen, but I think we're leading toward that right now. That sounds awesome. I love that. Yeah, in this space, you hear a lot about the money, right? In fact, a lot of you, some of you, probably came into the NFTs because you heard these crazy pictures of apes were selling for six figures and these punks were selling for millions of dollars, right? Some of you have probably heard that. Maybe it lured you into the space. But beyond the distraction of money and the beautiful, um, beautiful tech that allows artists to get paid fairly behind blockchain, aside from that, um, you know, personally as an artist, I think the most valued thing out of this entire space is the fact that anyone can be an artist and share their idea on a global stage where anyone can reach it. Because art at the end of the day is about the idea. And blockchain is allowing us to share our ideas and share our talent wherever we are and have it be viewed anywhere. And I truly believe uh, anyone can do that. I know there's a lot of you know, distraction with the, uh, with the cryptocurrency and the numbers and how many, uh, what's the ETH floor, right, of a project. Um, but if you look at some of the projects, regardless of the floor, regardless of what's being traded, you will see this beautiful evolution of new ideas in this new technological space. And I just find that so invaluable, being able to view works from so much more and so many more artists that we haven't seen before. Um, one thing I would add on that, and I think they have a bit of a different view, so then we keep it a bit spicy, you know, it. <laughs> is that, uh, uh, so one step back, I've been, you know, a supporter of blockchain since, you know, many years uh, on many ways. Uh, but in the end, uh, I don't really buy that much the rhetoric of, you know, NFTs now, everything, you know, is suddenly open and everyone can express whatever they want. Like probably that was true at an initial phase where the space was still very, very small and you could just, you know, ping someone on Twitter and that person would be responsive and there was an organic process. But in reality, what's happening right now is that uh, it's actually quite difficult if you want to go on a certain marketplace uh, that is, let's say, a bit curated uh, to sell your art. So the way I see it is that uh, blockchain and NFTs, uh, in my opinion, are nothing more than a tool to deliver a certain concept that needs to be profound. It doesn't mean anything, NFTs. NFTs are like something that uh, in the future you would not even hear about NFTs because uh, it's just an obvious way to represent digital property in a digital society and they'll just be there. Right? But as the same way as you don't talk about you know, the technology behind uh, I don't know, WhatsApp, uh, you just send messages, you'll just you know, create art that is digital through NFTs. So the way I see it is, uh, the traditional art world has many things that personally I don't like, you know, like the snobbish nature sometimes that it has, but it also has uh, some good things in terms of uh, delivering the concept, elevating the concept uh, to the next level. And I feel that the phase of, you know, just, you know, dropping the JPEG uh, on OpenSea and uh, making money out of it uh, is gone. Uh, and now we are going to a next phase uh, where uh, it's really about uh, what you want to say. And it needs to be something that... Uh, 
you know, is well thought, well executed, is next level, and hopefully from the traditional world you take that uh, high quality of execution of certain projects even outside the digital world because there is this big misconception that uh, NFTs are digital so you cannot enjoy them. No, actually, I mean, look at what's happening now in Times Square, actually. You can have uh, amazing artworks, enormous. Uh, you can interact with them. You can change them. So NFT is really a creative mean, a tool uh, to an end. So in my opinion, uh, we need to create a bridge between, uh, let's say, the good aspects of the traditional world, because it's there since uh, so many years, they might have done something good, I think. Take that and then uh, bring them into the NFT space and maintain a very open and decentralized ethos. I mean, I've been myself like quite early in the space, but I don't think there is any like uh, medal from being early. Actually, you know, early sometimes means that many people that were not very sophisticated experimented with things and, uh, you know, they made money even out of it and it went well. And now you start seeing uh, more sophistication, like uh, very important creators coming in. And in my opinion, we should uh, embrace it and bring these uh, uh, to the next level. So then, uh, as I said, it's not really about NFTs, but it's about uh, the art. What's been really exciting for me is within the NFT space, I think of NFTs as being alive. Um, we have Web1, which is kind of like a home for your website. You have Web2, where you're kind of broadcasting one way. Web3 is so much more an interaction with your community. And, and what's, really, what's been really fun is listening to the community and, and working with them, uh, having that back and forth talk. That's, what, that's what's been really cool for me. And I'm really excited to see all of that continue. I think you touched both of you on a really great point of how this is just the beginning. And NFTs, as time goes on, um, may just be something that is technological. And then every single artist can use that technology as a tool to build and tell the stories that they want to tell. And I think that's the most important thing about being an artist in this space. And with that... I want to thank all of you so, so much for being here, for supporting artists, for being artists, and for helping all of us create a space where we can all share the stories that we want to tell. So thank you all so, so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And a quick shout out to Amber for coming up with these wonderful questions. Thank you, guys. Have a good rest of your time here.